Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be unboxing and taking a look at the new BlueSound Power Node. For those of you who are new to the BlueSound range, the Power Node is a wireless streaming amplifier. This means that it is a device that can wirelessly connect your home network and play back your digital music through a pair of speakers. Using a smartphone, tablet or computer, you can control the Power Node and play music from internet radio stations, from a whole variety of streaming services, or from music files stored on your network. This is the latest upgrade to the Power Node line, replacing the Power Node 2i, which was a product that I absolutely loved, so I'm excited to see what Blue Sander managed to improve this time around. But before that, I have to get it out of the box. To start with, I slightly clumsily cut through the protective film and then take the top off the box. The first thing you'll see is a quick setup guide. As the name implies, this will tell you everything you need to know to get the Power Node set up. At the back here is an accessories box that I'll set aside for now and come back to in a moment. Underneath these cardboard protective shells is the power node itself. Under that, and hidden away underneath the bottom cardboard insert, is another booklet detailing the warranty conditions and the other legal notices. Finally, unwrapping the fabric bag, I can now reveal the new power node. We have a white model here today, but it's also available in black. Looking in the accessories box, the Blue Sound Power Node ships with three cables and a pair of small adapter plugs. First up in the box are two power cables. One is the Shuko 2 pin plug used across Europe, going to the IEC connector used by the power node. The second cable is the UK mains plug to IEC connector. Next, there's an Ethernet cable, which allows you to connect the power node to a wired network. Finally, there are these two small mini jack to Toslink optical adapters. These are used to connect a standard sized optical cable the kind you may have coming from a television, for example, into the smaller sockets used on the power node. You've got to remember to take the little rubber caps off the end before you use them, though. So what's new about the new power node? Well, firstly, the finishes have been upgraded in a way that's hard to convey in a video, but is immediately noticeable once you see and feel them in the flesh. There's definitely a more premium texture to the finish. This is nice, but what's of more concern to me is how Blue Sand have made changes to how the power node runs and how it sounds. Firstly, they've upgraded the internals to a new quad-core processor. I'd never found the old model to be slow or unresponsive, but the new model is certainly snappy, and the added headroom that the new processor provides should ensure a degree of future-proofing for any new audio technologies or codecs that may come along. The biggest differences, as far as I'm concerned, are the new DAC chip, which is the digital to analog converter, and extra power employed by the new power node. Stepping up to 80 watts per channel from the previous model 60, the difference is quite immediately obvious. The previous model was a favourite of ours in store and was running most of the time, so I'm quite familiar with how it sounded. Between shooting this video and putting it all together, I had the chance to give this new model a whirl and say that I'm impressed would be an understatement. The increase in the bass that you get from having that extra power is pretty striking, and there's also a noticeable improvement in the detail you get at the top end, which is what you'd hope for from having an improved DAC chip. If at all possible, you should come into one of our stores to have a listen and hear for yourself, but I think this is a significant upgrade that has made what was already a great little amp even better. Taking a look at the back, I can show you the unit's connectivity. Taking centre stage of the speaker terminals. These will accept either bare wire connections or 4mm banana plugs. If you're using bare speaker cable, simply unscrew the collars around the speaker terminals. From above, you can see the holes in the central bars of the speaker terminals. Simply insert some speaker cable, stripped to the top centimetre or so of its plastic coating, into this hole, and then screw the collar tight to clamp the cable in place. If, like us, you use speaker cable with banana plugs on the end, you'll first need to remove the four plastic pips that are blocking the speaker terminals. This is a tiny bit fiddly, but can easily be done with a small tool such as this precision screwdriver. Simply insert the edge between the collar of the speaker terminal and the plastic pip, and it should pop right out. These are only loosely connected, so shouldn't require too much leverage to remove. Once these are all out, you can easily insert your speaker cable. Elsewhere on the back, you can see a variety of connectors. One of these is a subwoofer output. This takes a single RCA cable and allows you to connect the power node to an active subwoofer. This version of the power node also features the ability to wirelessly pair with a new Blue Sound Pulse Sub Plus. Next to the subwoofer out is a USB socket. This allows you to insert a memory card or external hard drive filled with music into the power node and via the BlueOS app, play that music back through your speakers. Below the USB socket is an Ethernet port, allowing you to connect the power node to your network via a cable rather than wirelessly. The wireless chip in the power node is very good, and it supports dual band Wi-Fi, but if it is feasible to use the Ethernet cable, I'd recommend it. Next to these is an IR input, which will accept a mini jack input from a remote eye. These are only really necessary if you plan on relying on a remote control, 
but also want to hide the power node away within a cabinet. Finally here you can see two dual input sockets. These will take an analog connection via a 3.5mm mini jack or connect to a standard optical cable using one of the adapters I mentioned earlier. The main reason somebody is likely to use an analog connection is to connect a turntable into the power node. This is easily done and may just require a mini jack to RCA cable, but the power node does not have an internal phono stage. This means that if you want to connect a record player, you need to ensure that it either has a line level output or connect via an external phono preamplifier. For an optical connection, plugging in the supplied adapter gives a standard sized optical socket. Connecting digitally via optical ensures that the conversion from digital to analog that has to happen to your music at some point is done by the power node using its high quality DAC chip. For this reason, I suggest that if you are connecting a digital source, such as a CD player, using an optical cable means that you're likely to get better sound quality than if you are to rely on the DAC chip in your CD player. Obviously, if you do have a very high quality CD player, you still have the option of using the analog connection and allowing the power node to simply act as an amplifier. Optical connections are also useful for those wishing to connect to slightly older televisions in order to use the power node and their speakers to improve the sound they get from their TV. However, for those with newer televisions, there is another way of connecting to the power node, namely the HDMI ARC connection. This uses an HDMI cable plugged into the ARC port of your television to take audio from the TV and into the power node. There are differences between the formats that an HDMI ARC connection and an optical connection can transport, but none of these differences apply to the format supported by the power node. The HDMI connection can also send signals that allow you to control the volume of the power node with your television's remote control, but there's also a setting within the BlueSound app that will allow the power node to learn the infrared signals coming from the remote if you're using an optical connection, rendering that difference slightly moot. This is a slightly long-winded way to say that regardless of whether you use the optical or HDMI connection to connect your television to the power node, you'll get the same exceptional quality sound. It's no secret that most television speakers sound not great, so plugging your TV into your power node means that you can get brilliant performance from your music and your movies. The final thing to talk about with this revised power node is this new top panel. It's a touchscreen and gives you an easy way to control the unit without having to pull up the app or reach for a remote control. On its default setting, it is activated by a proximity sensor, so it will light up when it senses you nearby. In the middle is the volume bar, which can be changed either by sliding or tapping the dots on either side. On the bottom row, either side of the status LED are lights that you can tap to skip backwards or forwards a track. I think the best aspect of this new panel, however, are the five quick access presets along the top row. This allows you to set up quick, one-touch access to a favourite radio station or streaming service playlist. So that's the new power node from BlueSound. A little earlier on this channel, I did a video looking at the new BlueSound node, and in that I went into how you could connect a BlueSound player to your network, add your streaming services, and set up presets using the BlueOS app. Every step there is exactly the same for the power node, so please have a look at that if you're interested in the next steps to get your power node up and running. I hope you've enjoyed this video, thanks for watching.